Yes, hi. I'm coming to you from Chico, California. A uh, little background. I'm originally from Canada, but uh, moved here in 1984. Uh, God called me in 1988 uh, to himself and to uh, start studying the scriptures. I was in a Baptist evangelical church here in America, and uh, I was in it for 10 years, struggling, as I was looking at, at scripture and what I was hearing from the pulpits and what I was hearing from different pulpits, not only our church, but uh, a myriad of, of churches here in America. Uh, well, make a long story short, everybody's preaching the same thing. Uh, sin. It's, I call it a blasphemous sin gospel because that's what it is. It's all about sin. It's all about you're a sinner. It's all about you need to confess your sins. You're denying and rejecting Jesus Christ. You've denied the gospel. You've made Christ an utter failure is what you've done. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to cut to the chase here because uh, I have many, many, many videos to do. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. I, I'm quoting from the King James, uh, the English scriptures. I don't know what what you people do over there uh, if you it looks like you're a Romanian church or whatever but I know we have Romanian churches here I've gone to them and, and warned them also so uh, but a lot more work to do obviously uh, this is critical because God is, is is judging the church I believe now as as we look around us with what's going on in the world and plagues and uh, uh, all kinds of natural disasters that are just horrific. We just had a huge tornado here in the Bible Belt. If that isn't a signal, I don't know. You know, there's a tornado that ripped right through the Bible Belt from uh, through Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, that whole southeast Bible Belt area of America. Church on every corner. Okay, let's get to Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, double period, colon, profound gospel statement by Jesus there. Did not exclude one person. No, nope, not one. No, he forgave all sin for all people for all time. God forgave the world before the foundation of the world. This is what he promised Abraham, that he would save the world. And he has. And that's what a, a, a true believer has to believe. Not, I, I believe and I receive Jesus and now I'm a Christian and I'm saved, but you're not. So under your gospel, most of the world is going to go to, uh, to hell or whatever you call the lake of fire and uh, you'll be in heaven. I think you need to read Matthew, or Mark, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 13, verse 23 to 30, because there he tells us the opposite. He says, they'll come from the east, the west, the north, and the south, and sit down in the kingdom of God, and you thrust out. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the people that have committed the unpardonable sin. Now, who commits the unpardonable sin? are those who speak forth a false, blasphemous gospel. It's preachers, teachers, evangelists, Bible study teachers, right down to home Bible study teacher. anybody speaking forth the word of God. So here we go. Uh, gave you the gospel. There it is. Short, sweet, simple. The church made it Babylon. Confusing. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is the author, finisher, and interpreter of the Holy Scriptures. Verse 32, and whosoever speaketh, it's all about speaking and teaching. That's what the unpardonable sin is. It wasn't uh, to the Pharisees back there, no. The Pharisees were only an example of, of, of the Christian church, by the way, and all of the Old Testament right from Genesis to Revelation. It's all about the Christian church. 
It's about the gospel, it's about Christ, and it's about the Babylonian Christian church that she went off the rails. She became the abomination of desolation, which is here now. From Matthew 24, when you see this, you better run out of Judea. That means get out of the Christian church is what it means. Read Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Come out of her. Who's her? Her is the unfaithful bride. She's mystery Babylon. Not a mystery anymore. She's the harlot. She, she's the, the, the fornicator. She is uh, Sodom. Uh, everything that's, uh, that's negative in, in the book of Revelation is about the Christian church. I'm sorry, but fact. Whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world nor in the world to come. The gospel age now. Verse 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. What's the fruit? The fruit is the gospel, verse 31. That's the fruit. This was a test. This was a test on the Christian church. The test was not on, on the world. God was going to spin the world, and whoever comes to Jesus and believes in him, uh, he'll be saved and go to heaven. No, God saved the whole world before the foundation of the world. Read Ephesians chapter 1. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Us is the whole world. And his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. You've corrupted the gospel, by the way. That's what you've done. And the, the fruit is the gospel, not somebody's uh, looking at somebody's moral behavior. O generation of vipers, verse 34, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Speak, teach. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It's all about teaching and speaking about verse 31, the gospel. And, and the gospel that was given to us so plainly and clearly by the Apostle Paul all through his writings, where the law and sin were abolished at the cross. No more sin for nobody. Sin, that word should have never been spoken after the cross. But it stayed here. The church kept it here. They've kept you under control with the, with, with the sin and the guilt and the fear and the shame and... So you come back next week for more, uh, more poison is what it is. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You've made the treasure, the treasure's the gospel by the way, and you've made it evil. Plain and simple. Now here is where it gets very severe. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, teach about the gospel, they will give an account thereof on the day of judgment. Verse 37, he repeats it, just in a little different way. For by thy words, words, speaking, teaching, thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So who's in peril here? The preachers, teachers, Bible study teachers, I'm telling you, anybody who speaks forth the word of God, those pure people that are sitting in the pews have not committed the unpardonable spin, sin. No, they have not. But, but you, if you're a preacher or a teacher or, or speaking forth the word of God, you have. You're a Pentecostal denomination. I know exactly what they teach. Nothing but sin. Nothing but sin, I know. So this is, a, this is a warning for you. Now, you can go on to, to look at many of my videos where I explain this more in detail uh, about the gospel. I, I, I use Romans, I use uh, uh, Colossians, uh, 2 Corinthians, all of it uh, to prove without a shadow of a doubt. And I used... Uh, the Apostle John and First John and the test of who's a born again believer, a true born again believer. Are there any born again believers in this world of ours? 
I think very few. Very few. Very few that pass the test of 1 John 3, 9. And that verse says, Whosoever is born of God, born again, doth not commit sin. That's in the King James, very precise, very clear, uh, doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. It's impossible to sin. Why? Why? Because I'm a good person? No. Because God Christ has made me holy and blameless before him. And he took away the law, Colossians 2.14. He nailed the law and sin to the cross. No more law, no more sin. Read Romans 4.15, and that's it. There's the gospel. Thank you. If you want to learn more, go to my videos. Thank you.